Okay, guys, welcome. Good afternoon, and welcome to today's webinar on how one school is using cutting-edge location-aware alerting technology to help to help keep students safer, sponsored by EchoHow. My name is Liz Lohm, and I am the Marketing Manager for eSchool News, and I will be your host today. Today's speakers are Officer Brad Ford, School Resource Officer for Skyview High School, and Scott Lapham, Director of Solutions Engineering for EchoHow. Before I pass things off, I'd like to mention a few quick things. If you have any questions during the presentation, please post them in the Q&A panel in the lower right-hand side of the screen, and we will make sure to cover as many of those questions as time allows in our Q&A section. Also, um, on the second slide of today's presentation, there's a video. Um, to hear the audio for the video, you will need to listen it through your computer speakers. You won't hear it through your conference line if you've dialed in. So just make sure that your audio and your computer is turned up a little bit. Finally, um, please be on the lookout for a follow-up email that will contain a copy of the slides and a link to the archived webinar for your review or for you to share with others. So without further ado, I'd like to pass things off first to Officer Ford. So Officer Ford. Liz, thank you. Thank you guys for joining us today for this webinar. <clears throat> what we will do is we will first go to the uh, the next slide, and we will watch the video of what we're doing here at Skyview, and then we will talk briefly about what we're doing. All right, so that's a little bit of uh, what we're doing here at Skyview. As you guys can see on your screens right now, um, there, there's a couple points on here that I really want to talk about. Um, when we decided to, to utilize the Echo Health School Safety Solution at Skyview High School, there was a lot of different things that we had to, to play into our decision making. Um, we wanted the ability for teachers to call for help in any situation. And we all know in a school setting that, um, you know, different things happen. Not always is it a lockdown call. Um, we have medical emergencies. We have, you know, assistance needed where we need a teacher to be able to call for help and get us to come to their classroom immediately and assist them with that. As you guys can see on bullet number two, um, it's estimated that 10 to 25 percent of injuries to children occur while they are in school. And that was a big factor for us in our decision making for the Echo Health School Safety Solution. We looked at the ideas of a panic button under the desk or a panic button on the wall, and that just wasn't practical enough. We we have a school of 250,000 square feet. It's a large building with multiple entrances, and we wanted that no matter where the teachers were inside the building, they could call for help. And that's why we utilized the system, because it gave us that ability to basically put a panic button around the teacher's neck to where they can call for help. And actually, you know, I was late kind of getting onto this call because we're dealing with a medical situation right now at the school, and I, uh, this is something that we deal with on a regular basis. Um, the other point that I really wanted to talk about is the bullet number four. School leaders need to establish emergency response plans to deal with life-threatening medical emergencies in children. That's exactly what we're doing here at Skyview. Um, if a kid has a seizure, which was what happened today, the teacher told me that he pressed his button and within 10 seconds a phone call was made to his classroom and in under 20 seconds the nurse, myself, as well as administrators were in the classroom and able to render aid to that student. Prior to us having this system, there was times where I've had, you know, or, uh, fire trucks or ambulances show up in front of Skyview and they walk in and they look at me as the school resource officer and they say, what do we have? 
And unfortunately, there were many times where I told him, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. And that's just not practical. If I can get up there and I can render aid to a student or somebody and get the people here that, that need to be here, that's what we were really looking for. And with this solution and implementing it at Skyview, we have definitely done that. I mean, to have medics on the way in less than a minute to get to a student that's unconscious because he's had a seizure, that's very important. And as a parent, I think that that would be, if my child was in a situation like that, that would be huge to know that people are getting to my kid as fast as they can to render the aid that they need to in order to help protect my kids. So let me talk real quick about, about Skyview. We are located in Nampa, Idaho. Um, the community, there's about 90,000. Uh, we have three large high schools with about, and I say large, it's large for Nampa, or for Idaho. We've got three high schools. We're the smallest of the three. We've got about 1,300 students and uh, about 100 staff. So that was when we when we looked at the Eckhouse Schools JC solution, we wanted to ensure that uh, every staff member in the building had the ability to call for help. And, and going back a little bit, you know, and the help would be for a lockdown situation, a medical emergency, or assistance needed in your classroom in order to remove a child. Um, this next bullet, the first point right there, you see our, our safety priorities, and it was reducing the emergency response times. As I told you this morning, with what we are dealing with in a real-world situation, in 20 seconds, I was up there and able to start rendering aid to the child if that was needed and get medics to me and help me take care of that child um, and approve our lockdown process. Um, I know that here in, in Nampa, what we were doing is we were utilizing the, the, the system of the secretary calling a lockdown. To me, it was just unrealistic um, to have or to think that somebody was just going to walk in the front door, look at the secretary and go, hey, I'm here, go ahead and call a lockdown, or come in the back entrance of our school. There was just so many different variables that we had to try and collect into one to make it a user-friendly to where we could utilize it throughout the whole entire, entire building. And we've done that. You know, everybody's now our secretary. Anybody can call for a lockdown. If they are dealing with a situation that requires that, that allows them no matter where they are. And we've actually pushed this out to our football stadium, and we've pushed this out to our bus loading zone. So anywhere that we have kids, we are going to be able to get, get emergency assistance to them quicker based off of this technology. Um, the, the adapting to a cost-effective and manageable technology, it, it was simple. You know, we contacted Ekahau. Um, and said, hey, have you guys tried this in a high school? Because we've seen that they were utilizing this system in a mental health facility. And they, their answer to us was, no, but let's, let's try it. So, you know, we were able to do that. Um, and, and you guys will see on this next slide, this is where we, you know, generally have a lot of concentration of kids um, uh, through, throughout the day, the cafeteria, library, hallways, that kind of stuff. Um, the next one is the teacher and student visibly alerting to medical or, or disciplinary and other emergencies. So this is important to us because no matter where I'm at as well, I can see what's going on. So I don't need to be sitting in front of my computer and see what's going on. It'll tell my tag instantly that I need to be somewhere um, the, the panic button, um, it, it's just, guys, it's so easy. It's just, it hangs around the teacher's neck. If they have an emergency, they don't have to go find a button. They don't have to find, locate that button on the wall, or they just simply pull down on their tag, and the, the message will send out in 3.9 seconds. The last time that we did this, it went in 3.9 seconds to, to dispatch, because dispatch views are, um, lockdown pool. So if a lockdown is pulled, dispatch is doing that as well. Um, it's preventing injuries without surveillance. We've talked about video cameras. Um, my thing about video cameras is, is if you want to watch the incident after it happens, video cameras are great. For us, it was we needed to take care of the situation while it's occurring. And that was really what stood out to us with this because we're using the existing Wi-Fi. We're using the system that's already in the school. That can help it need to bring in any other materials, any other equipment. They came in, they mapped our school, they got us our tags. Tags were all programmed the way we wanted them. And that's another thing too, 
for those for those of you who are wondering, these tags are programmable to anybody in any school. So if you want the red button for us on the screen, you can see the red button is for assistance needed. The blue button is for a medical and then the lockdown pool. So you can utilize this tag however you want to. So it was really easy for us. They came in, they mapped out our school, and in three days we were up and running. Um, somebody has asked about um, how many false alarms we've experienced. When we started the trial period back in April, we experienced it a lot because we weren't utilizing the product correctly. Um, we The training, we and I did the training as well with Mandy Petty, who's our school counselor. We were... Um, trying to, you know, teach these guys, hey, this is how you use the system. And once we got past, I mean, the first couple of days, it's been great. Um, the teachers are, they love the system. When we first started back up into school, everybody's asking, hey, when do we get our tags? So it's been good as far as that stuff goes. Um, the next one I want to talk about is the geofencing for the, uh, for the school. Um, we all have visitors that come in our school. Um, you can utilize the system in that regards as well. We personally don't do that yet, um, but we are in talks with the administration to try and do that so that if a visitor comes in and they sign in, they can be given a tag, and then they can take that, and um, they can walk around the school. And now I can watch it on my vision software, and if that person says, hey, I need to go to the cafeteria and pay, you know, put money on my kid's account, well, they end up over in the gymnasium, which is not anywhere near a cafeteria, I can see that on the screen and I can get security to them or I can go respond to them as well and say, hey, you know, this is where you need to go. So it's allowed us to view inside the school in real time and know exactly who's in our school and what they're doing. So that's been great as far as just another layer of security that we've, we've placed here at, uh, at Skyview. Another thing that this system does is our, our staffing. Um, we can page them and send instant messages to them. And so let's say we have a lockdown situation. I can get on that system and send them a text message and say, police have been notified. Or if police are already on scene, the officers outside can also send messages into the teachers and let them know, police are here. We, we're going to get to you as quickly as possible. So now we've opened up that communication outside to our law enforcement as well. So this system has allowed us to basically bridge that gap between law enforcement and schools, which we didn't have before, I don't think. Um, to go back to how we decided to go with Echo Helm, um, this was an anonymous donor. We contacted them and said, we want this system. And all I did was made a couple phone calls. And I said, this is what I'm trying to do. We're trying to get this new technology into a school system so that we can get police to our kids faster. And I got a donation for it. So it was really great. Um, like I said, 100 of our teachers, they wear the badge. Um, they can um, call lockdown. They can call for help. They can do whatever they want to get help to them because not all of our teachers have radio communication. And cell phone, if we think about the cell phone situation, you know, my cell phone doesn't work inside of a brick building. So, I mean, the Wi-Fi inside here allows us the communication that if we were to have an active shooter or a major incident, We've got 1,300 kids going to, you know, try and use their phones in order to call out or contact mom, those types of stuff. So we utilize the Wi-Fi, which doesn't have anything to do with the cellular coverage. So it allows us still the communication that we might not get through cell phone or even a, a landline because the phone systems are all tied up. Um, once again, you know, I can send messages out to every badge holder and I can talk to them. Um, like I, and I told you guys before this, three days, three days to get the system up and rolling once we, we purchased the product, it, it was, that was very instrumental to us because we, we didn't want a whole bunch of different systems coming in here. We didn't want a bunch of wiring. We didn't want people drilling in our walls. And the system allowed us to do what we needed to do and it'd be minimal in the school because the school was looking at us too because we, we brought this idea to the school and said, we want to try this, and they're kind of looking at us and going, well, who else is doing this? And nobody else was doing it. So we wanted to pilot it and get it out there so that when I talk to you guys in these types of environments, I can say, this is what we're doing, and this is how the system works. And it works It works great. I mean, it's a simple, it's easy. I mean, we, we're relying on 100 people to effectively utilize the system, and this just makes it easy for us to do that. So that's 
our system in a brief here at Skyview. Um, I know that there's a lot of good questions coming in, and I think that what I'm going to do is I'll pass this over to Scott um, Lampin. He is going. He is the um, director of director of solutions engineering for Echo. I'm going to hand this over to him, and then I think at the end, him and I can answer questions and, and get some of these questions answered for you guys and uh, go from there. So without further ado, Scott, it is all yours. All right. Thank you very much, Brad. Um, let me get my desktop shared here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually show you. I've got a, a system set up. It's not actually the Skyview system, but it's set up to work exactly like the Skyview system. So I wanted to kind of show and demonstrate a little bit about um, how it works and what it does. So in front of me, I've got a, a handful of the B4 badge tags, like Brad had mentioned, that the teachers and he wear. And then if you look at the screen, I've actually got different classrooms set up and, and hallways and, and elevator lobbies and, you know, different areas to decide because the zone reference is what really gives Brad the uniqueness of where the event's pulled. So when I pull the event or I initiate a medical emergency, what it's going to do uh, is it knows where I'm at by zone number. So classroom 353, if I'm in there, if I'm in 350, if I'm in the lunchroom or the cafeteria, wherever I'm at. And the beauty about having this is, in essence, it functions very similar to a panic button in, in a sense that, you know, when you call for help, the right people get notified, but it's also carried on the person. So in an elementary school, for instance, if a teacher is bringing a classroom out to recess and it happens in the hallway, um, she can, he or she can actually pull the exact same alarm wherever they at within the Wi-Fi connection area and be able to initiate that event to include the location of where it was at. So what I'm going to do is, is before I actually go in and kind of show uh, how the system works, I want to go through what happens in an actual event. For instance, uh, Officer Ford had just mentioned that they actually had a medical emergency uh, a little while ago. So what I'm going to do is I just press the button on my tag, which is a blue button. And what this pulls up, uh, and let me just accept this because my speakers are yelling at me here. So uh, it got my attention. It pulled up the alarm on the screen. So if you have a dashboard or a, a administrative assistant or somebody that's in the, the, uh, the office, they could have this up. Officer Ford could have this up. This is the very same thing in their scenario that actually pulls up on a screen at police dispatch. So what also happened is my nurse and my resource officer badge tag, it has an LED display on it. So it got a message that basically said there's a medical emergency in classroom 353 on the third floor, which is this information right here, which is the unique location identifier. On the map, it's going to show me a graphical position of where it is. And of course, if I need to, to reference that, I can pull it out so I can see uh, exactly where it's at. So what I did is, is when I uh, hit the button over here to accept it, I can either accept it or decline it. Uh, and what that does is that's really for documentation purposes. Uh, so I just accepted it as admin, and you can see who it was, who initiated it, and that kind of stuff. So for a minute, I'm actually going to take this off the screen, and I'm going to go over to a different portion uh, of this, this, and then I'm going to come back to this in just a moment, right? So uh, if I come back over to the events tab, which is where the historical data is kept uh, all the way up. So here's the alert that I just had. So in the history of the, of the software, it basically tells you who initiated it, where they were at, what it was going, and it gives you some tabs over here. So right now at this point, you know, hopefully I've already gone, taken care of the medical emergency, uh, I've addressed the situation, and now I'm, you know, back in my office or I'm back doing something different. Uh, and it gives me the ability to go back and do several different things with the information. So right now I've got my, my events tab opened up so I can see everything. But right now I'm concerned about this top one because it's still open. So if I click on this again, obviously I pull up the exact same map that I saw just a few minutes ago. And this gives me a place to actually do additional information. So let's say I'm going to come down here. And instead of admin, I would probably be logged in as Officer Ford or another security representative or, in this instance, maybe even the school nurse. So I'm going to put... You know, student X, Y, Z uh, had seizure, called the ambulance. And then I might go in and document more uh, and put in, you know, more details, but I'm going to put comment. I didn't close it yet because I wanted to follow back up again and show you that there are some differences. But over here in the response, it always gives me the documentation that says what is there. So now I'm going to come in and I'm just going to say that it's closed so that I can complete the loop. 
common and closed. Now it turns green, uh, and the history is there. So if I refresh it, uh, it comes back, and now it's closed. So over here, I can go through, and I can kind of categorize that event. And this is really important because it really allows you to do analytical reporting on the number of events and where they happen and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so right now, I'm basically just going to put ambulance called, uh, just have something in there. And then this over here, the green button, and, and as you can see, a lot of different events have this ability. And what this is, is we recall this forensic replay. So what this does is this gives you the ability. Now, granted, uh, in my scenario, I'm in one room doing this. But in, in uh, Skyview, you're going to have teachers in all the rooms and uh, the resource officer and so forth. So you can see down here, it gives you a bunch of information. You know, I'm going to fast forward. You see a little bit of movement on the screen, but there's not a lot. But in a typical situation, you'd have the other teachers uh, out and about walking around. So this gives you the ability to basically replay the event. This is a phenomenal tool when it comes to test analysis. So if you're going to go through and you're going to do a mock scenario, or you're going to do a test poll, um, this gives you some really good uh, information to critique your own testing. It also gives you some information to make sure that the response was uh, in a timely manner. And, and you know, you basically just uh, have some information that's here. So once you have that event there uh, and you have everything set up and ready, now let's go back to the locations tab. So now I have this, this going on again. And for instance, uh, what I did is one button on the tag, which is a medical emergency. That's kind of what we went through the whole process. We have another one that, that Officer Ford has that if I press the other button on this tag, it's basically going to let just a school resource officer know, but it's going to pull up a help requested. So it operates very similarly, but it gives you a different information. And in this case, I didn't have to notify the nurse. I notified just a school resource officer. That is completely configurable because if it's a help requested, I might notify all the other teachers on my floor so that maybe one of them could come help me or maybe just all the other employees because there may be some uh, other staff members that are on the floor that are wearing tags that could come to my assistance as well. Uh, this could be anything. It could be the fact that maybe there's uh, a couple of students that are threatening a teacher or there's a fight in progress. There's anything that's not necessarily a lockdown severity but it does require some assistance. And this is all basically hands-free stuff. So I've got the tag, I pull on it really quick, or I press the button, and that enables me as a teacher, a school resource officer, a nurse, an administrator, whoever, to be able to attend to whatever situation is at hand, giving me the ability to, to basically do what I need to do without having to go find a phone, go find a panic button, or anything like that. So I'm just going to accept this just because we kind of already went through this. I'm going to put this, this was a test for a closed loop. I'm going to go ahead and close it, and then I'm out. So one thing that's really interesting is, is we're doing this in real time, giving the ability to very quickly respond, just like Officer Ford had mentioned, being able to bring in uh, and get help where help is needed where it is. Now, that obviously will, you know, hopefully increase the comfort level of teachers, especially if you're in any kind of high-risk area uh, or environment. Uh, it also gives um, – you know, gives the processes a little bit better flow. So now that you have all that data, what are some of the things you can do with it? So if I wanted to come over to our reports module and I wanted to come down here to staff alarms by rule because that's what these were just affected by. And if I click up this report, I've got several different reports based upon the information that I've gathered. So under a school lockdown medical emergency. So if I come over here to the reports and I pull up this medical emergency report, this is run a little while ago, but it gives me the ability to come through and, and document from the time frame at hand, which this was a little bit old because I don't want to take the time up to run the report, which it doesn't take long, but it just gives you the, the time to go through it. Um, it tells you where the events happened, when they happened, who pulled them, you know, some really good information. And this is good for statistical purposes, too, because maybe there's certain areas of the hospital, or excuse me, the facility that not necessarily would have the medical emergency, but maybe you're going to have the help requested, and that's always going to be in certain areas where maybe it's just a higher risk or maybe a higher congregating area for, for students. So if I come over here, I can see that the alarm type, which went on the, the event tab, we classified it. You can report specifically on these if you want to. And then if you come over here to the comments, you have different things that were actually en entered um, in the comment section on the main screen. So you have this ability. And this reports, or these reports can actually be sent and scheduled to whoever uh, needs to get them, whether it's a school administrator, 
if it's the nurse in the case of a medical emergency uh, or whoever, you can actually schedule these reports so the first of, of every week or every day at the end of the day, it would automatically email out the report, uh, giving them the information that they need. So if I wanted to look at um, like a school lockdown, I can see that there's a couple of different uh, tests right here. And these were all tests, luckily. Uh, hopefully you don't have this situation uh, ever. We all know that, you know, hopefully not. Uh, so you have the different process of the same information that's gathered, but for the different events. So if I come back over to vision, and you can see that, you know, throughout the school, and, and we've got different floors uh, laid out with different zones and different sets. So this is basically an end-to-end -end coverage. In my example, I don't have any outdoor space set up, but like uh, Officer Ford had mentioned, they've done the football field, and they're working on the, or they did the bus area, and they've got other areas. So anywhere that they would need to do this, that portable panic button and, and badge tag is available. So a couple things that, that Officer Ford had also mentioned that they're using the system for that I wanted to touch on really quick is something, you know, called messaging. So all of the tags have a LED display on them that has the ability to receive messaging. So whether I pull this, the lockdown and every teacher in the building knows within two or three or four seconds that, the, that a lockdown has been initiated or a medical emergency going to the nurse and Officer Ford, I also have the ability to send messages on demand. So right now, these are the six tags that I have in front of me, and I can search and sort this by building campus school. So let's say you implemented this on a complete school district uh, method. You would have, within the map section, you would have a different building, different floors, different zones. Over here, you'd be able to search and sort the same way. So if I wanted to let a particular school know, or I wanted to let um, all the members of, of staff know, maybe there's bad weather in their area, Maybe there's uh, something there. I can use this as a mass communication. So I could come over here and basically just type in, you know, whichever uh, message is relevant. You know, maybe there's a tornado warning or there's something that's bad weather in the area where it's not necessarily notify and alert the entire school students included, but this would give you the ability to somewhat discreetly notify all the teachers. They would know they would get the message, but that gives you the ability to uh, set that all out. So you can see there's different things on here. I can pick and choose which one I want. This is also very useful in the event of, um, from my experience and what I've seen out there, the majority of, of schools, what they end up doing, and my kids are, are this way as well, is let's say Scott is a student and I'm in a, in, a, in a classroom and I need to go to the office for whatever reason or, or my parent is here to check me out. You know, typically what's usually done in my understanding is if uh, if the if the, the office needs to notify the classroom, they'll either use like an overhead page into the classroom uh, or they'll, if there's phones in there, maybe they'll call them. But what happens if the teacher itself is, is out with the, the students out in the, the gym class or they're taken to the cafeteria for lunch? This gives them the ability to actually put in a specific message. And, and now this time, maybe I'm going to say, you know, please send Scott to the office. Oops, I can type today. Excuse me. Scott to the office. And I would send it to only the teacher that was assigned, that Scott was assigned to their classroom. So the, the messaging gives you some pointed messaging. They're already carrying it. Uh, it really gives you some really good information in there. So to recap really quick, you know, you've got the mapping of the school. You've got the, the icons, which are teachers. In this case, it's different staff members have different icons. Uh, it could be generic where, like Officer Ford showed in the video, they're just dots notifying that, that it's somebody because you don't really know or care who that person is in the event of uh, some things. Now, if you want to do messaging, you know, there's some other things in there. But it does give you the ability to, to create all that information. Uh, you have the reporting aspect. You have the event management and the ability to communicate uh, back and forth to the teachers. So, in, in a basic synopsis, this is kind of the system and how Officer Ford is using it. Uh, in a minute, Officer Ford, feel free to, to jump in if there's any other use cases or any other things that you guys have determined uh, work within your environment using the system. But it's like he had also mentioned earlier, it's completely configurable. So in your, in your school, you may want to use the buttons for something other than medical and help wanted, and, and we can set that up or we can help set that up. But so what I want to do now is basically send this back over to um, ask any questions. So I know that there were a couple of questions that have been posted, so I'm going to pull up that list really quick. 
and if we want to get started on answering some questions. Yeah, Scott, I, I and Brad, uh, Officer Ford, I've been sending you some via the chat, so you can start with those if you would like. Okay. Okay, I will. <clears throat> All right, so there's a question that came in is what was the total cost and what's the yearly fee? Um, Scott, do you feel more comfortable talking about that, or would you like me to, to talk about that? So if you want to share your experiences, uh, or I can either way. So um, typically what we do is, is breaking it down by a cost per, per student, uh, kind of not really – it's not really – so what you do is you, you get the system installed as a one-time cost. Um, there's a yearly maintenance, but it's not that much. It's for it's for software support, so it's uh, it's kind of a minimal uh, thing. I think we've averaged it out where uh, on a typical school, it's about thirty dollars per student, forty dollars per student, depending upon the size of the school and the campus and all that kind of stuff. Because the the initial investment is the only real investment. The ongoing cost is just a percentage of that. Um, Officer Ford, do you want to kind of uh, let them know kind of how your process was from your point of view? No, absolutely. Absolutely. So when we were looking at the system and, you know, we know that we wanted every teacher, our first thing was like, well, let's buy like five or ten tags and see if it works. And that's just not practical, you know. So our, we, we decided let's just buy for 100 or, yeah, for 100 staff. Um, they also come with um, the system can, you can utilize beacons which are a wireless beacon that luckily for us, they look like cameras, so the kids don't mess with them. But that can amplify our Wi-Fi as well. We only utilized, we ordered 50, but we only utilized like 10 or 12 because the Wi-Fi was so good inside of Skyview, um, we had a couple areas that we needed to kind of help the Wi-Fi a little bit. So with the 100 tags and beacons and then the 100 chargers for us, it was less than $30 a student. We're looking at roughly thirty-two dollars to $35,000 is what it took to um, equip our school with, in my opinion as a police officer, probably one of the best security systems that I've seen because it takes the, you know, the guesswork out of it. Um, there's so many times where, you know, as in law enforcement, we've dealt with people who forget to dial 911 when their child is, you know, choking in front of them or whatever this takes the thought process out of it. So for us to pay that type of money for a system that allows every individual in the school to call for help, you can't put a price tag on it. I mean, you really can't because it it made our school, before we did this, our school was probably one of the worst to try and keep secure because we had so many entrances into the building. And we've done in three days and turned around and probably made it one of the safest in Idaho based on the system because now dispatch can see it. And you just can't – I can't put into words what this system has done for us here at Skyview. Um, so let's go to the next one. Oh, go ahead, Scott. I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. So I was just going to add in. And, and the reason it's kind of tricky is because there's a lot of different factors involved with, with, you know, telling you an actual cost right now today. So what I would encourage you to do, and I'm sure a little bit later on in the presentation we'll have um, probably some information as to – you know, how we calculate the cost maybe, uh, and then be able to get to you. So I would really say that it would be an individualized kind of per se quote, but the 30 to $40 per student I think is about the average that we've gotten. So did you have a question, Officer Ford, that you wanted to answer? Nope, nope, you covered it. Okay. Um, I was just going to um, go on to the next one because this is a really good question about um, do teachers receive a notification showing that their help was received? When we were doing the pilot, we weren't doing that. This was something that um, Mandy Petty, our counselor at the school, we she really worked hard with Hal to try and get some things changed as far as that particular thing goes. We wanted teachers to know that when you've pressed your button and help is now coming to you. So when you press a red button or a blue button, it's now going to tell you you've pressed the medical button, okay? And then it will tell you that help is coming. Okay, so it'll it'll let you know that we are coming to give you assistance. Um, what we did today or how we utilized it today is that the system went down to our secretary who then picks up the phone and calls the teacher, you know. So that gives us just many different layers of 
of protection. So the teacher can tend to the child until we get there. He's not sending a kid to run to get us. They're not trying to call down there. Now we're going to call back up to the classroom. You know, what do you got as we're responding? So like Scott said, it takes – I'm able to respond to the situation – Let's say it's a lockdown situation. I'm able to respond to that location and know that dispatch is sending me two more officers. I don't have to get on my radio. I don't have to do any of that. And now they're able to see me because what I've done is we've created my icon as a policeman. So now dispatch can see me move throughout the entire building, and um, they, they can send police to, to my exact location. So if the incident is occurring in the back of the school, police are going to respond to the back of the school not coming to the front and then trying to work their way to me. Now I'm getting police officers to me in the exact location much faster. So that was very important for us as well. Um, and Scott, you'll have to answer this. Who has access to the archives and reports? Is that everybody right. or? Absolutely not. Um, so okay. here, let me, let me elaborate a little bit on what, what Officer Ford had mentioned about um, being able to notify your message. So when I when the rule is created to where when I press the blue button, that's going to send the nurse and school resource officer a medical emergency, I can also configure the system to where I'm always going to send the originator tag that same message. So what could be done right now is when I press the blue button, it's going to notify the nurse and it's going to notify school resource officer. It's also going to send me that same message that says medical emergency room 353. Uh, Scott was the initiator. So you can certainly do that. Now, for the information as far as the archives and reports, that is completely restrictable however you want it set up. You can have it set so that, you know, maybe the officer or the administrator can only see uh, the reports and only a handful of people can see the live screen. Um, you, can, you can completely customize the, who has access to what through the system. Typically, uh, if you're only tracking, you know, or if you only have tags on the teachers, then obviously very few people need to be able to see that and watch that. They'll still get the rules. They'll still get the alerts. They'll still get the notifications, but you certainly won't have everybody being able to pull up uh, that map and see that or the reports or archives. Perfect. Hey, Scott, I'm going to go on to the next one. Um, are okay. the SRO and admin able to see the history of the teacher's location throughout the day? No. And you know why we don't, and that was a big thing for us is we didn't want teachers feeling like Big Brother was watching them because that's not what the system's intended to do. Um, and even for the administrators, they don't even view it. They have the system up, but we all know too that we're not sitting at our computers all day just watching what people are doing. And we really wanted to stay away from it. So we all we did was just made our teachers a certain color. So I know that, hey, I have a teacher in this location, but I don't know who that teacher is. And it doesn't, and not, we don't, you know, look at their history throughout the day. The only thing that we will look at or have the ability to look at is if they have called for help. And then, like Scott talked about, we can do the replay to see, you know, basically how we responded to that. And that's important to, you know, to us and, and how we respond. And, um, and there was another question that came up of who receives those reports. Well, I can get them. My police sergeant can get them who's in charge of me. My police chief can get them. You can have that report emailed to whoever you want to that you set up in the system to do that. So for me to send this to my police chief, and now my chief can say, hey, this is what Officer Ford's responding to throughout the day. As far as our medical issues, our assistance needed, um, I hope, like Scott said, hopefully we never have to utilize the lockdown system. But those systems are all in there, and we can replay it that way, but we do not watch the history of the teacher's and what they're doing throughout the day. So that's been, and you know what, we, we have teachers who we were afraid that would be upset about that. You know, I don't want to be seen on this map, and they've been the best. They're like, put my picture on that so you know that if I call for help, you can come get me. So it's been it's been pretty good reaction from, from the teachers. But they aren't viewing it as a Big Brother thing. They see that we're trying to bring a different type of security into the schools that has never been done before. Um, All right, Scott, officer. Do you have anything to add on that one? Not on that one. I noticed if you wanted to, to go ahead to the next one about uh, the false alarms. Um, yeah, and I touched on that a little bit. We had a you know a little bit there at the beginning. Um, this year has been pretty good as far as false alarms go. The teachers are, are used to it. It's so user friendly that uh, 
we've had very minimal. And luckily, you know, we've got teachers who are utilizing the product correctly, and we're getting help to our kids faster and getting assistance to where they need it faster and, and utilizing the system correctly. So, I mean, you're going to have false alarms until people figure out how to use the thing. And that's just reality. When, you, when you're relying on 100 people to utilize the system and not accidentally press a button or pull a lockdown, those things are going to happen. But that's also what we, what we took and changed how we were utilizing it in the school system. So it's, it's made it even more easier for us to, to utilize it this year in the schools because we're able to change what we were doing last year to make it more user-friendly this year. Um, Scott, I'll go on to the next one. Is there student-teacher visibility only in areas mentioned, halls, cafeterias, et cetera, and not the classroom? Why is that and the cost? Um, okay, no. Uh, we can view the teacher everywhere that they're at in the building, um, or the dot, I guess. I won't, I won't categorize them because we don't watch the, the person. Um, we watch and see where we do have staff. So it's wherever they are or are at in the building. So not just hallways, cafeteria. Um, I can see my, my staff out on the back patio, the bus loading zone, football fields, you name it. Wherever these tags are at and there's Wi-Fi coverage, we can see them on the map. That way, if they have an emergency wherever they are located, we can get to them. So I'm not guessing. And that's been big, too, is it, it takes the guesswork out of what I do. You know, if there's a major incident or a critical incident at a school, I need to know where it's coming from. And this allows me to do that because now I can respond faster and get to that location without having to guess. And that's been, that's been great. Um, I won't touch on the cost. We've already went over that, so I won't. Scott, do you have anything on that one? No, let's move on to the next one. Okay. And I was, um, I was reading this one. Go ahead. It was basically saying, what is the difference between Northside Texas system? I would say I don't know enough about the Northside Texas system to be able to ask that. What I would certainly say is we can certainly follow up and be able to, to tell you uh, additional information about ours and, and be able to see it. Now, there is a question in, in part of that that basically is probably for you, Officer Ford, that basically said, how has the reaction been from parents and the community on having the system installed? When we launched the system back in April, the reaction has been tremendous. And and I say we're, we're a close-knit community here in Nampa, um, but parents care. They want to know what we're doing in the schools to protect their kid. And when they drop their students off to us in the morning, we're going to do everything that we can to make sure they go home at night. And this system has allowed us to do that based on the fact that it puts 100 tags throughout the entire school so that if something happens anywhere in this building, I can get to it. And that's what I do. I'm, that's my job. So it effectively makes my job easier because I can respond to that exact location. So the community outpour has been great. The parents have been great. Um, we had teachers, like I said, um, we were doing this training and basically brought this to them and said, look, we're going to pilot this. This is what it is. This is why we're doing it. And we had teachers who cried, you know, it's about time we're doing something. We had teachers who, hey, is there a monthly fee? I'll pay the monthly fee. So we had a great reaction to the whole system. I mean, we, we have not got anybody that's really pushed us back and said, this is not a good system. Everybody who comes in and views it kind of walks out of with their, their mouth open going, this is awesome. I mean, because when you see it and you see it work and you see how we're trying to utilize the system in order to protect the kids, I don't think there's anything that they can say other than this is a, a, an amazing system. Okay, so one, one quick thing, let me jump in because I'm seeing a lot of additional questions about price and cost and how it's calculated. So let me spend just a minute and tell you, I'm, I don't really know how to give you dollars, but let me tell you how we calculate the cost. As we go through and, and once we talk about things and you guys decide you want to look into it, uh, we really care about, you know, the number of, of people that will be wearing the badge tag. We care about the number of buildings and the size of the buildings because the initial setup is really the, the only part with that. That's, those are the two real things that kind of we need to be able to determine an actual individualized cost per school or system. So as you can see, with those two variables, I mean, it, it could go from anywhere. So the, the, the schools that we've done so far, 
um, because they have varied in size, they have varied in numbers, we've kind of determined an average per student of those. That may or may not be the same within your facility or, or your organization, but we just, we, we do that to give kind of a relativity to it. Um, but once again, the, the different sizes and, and, and numbers of the schools are really what we need to be able to give you an accurate cost. Okay, so, um, Hey, Scott, will you talk on the, uh, let's go to the next question. Is the map of the school something that's been created from blueprints or is it generally available digitally? Um, I think that we actually scanned ours into the system and uploaded it. I mean, it was just that easy. And then it was up on the computer screen. And then when Ekahal people came out here to install this, they had the, up, the upper floor of Skyview, the lower floor of Skyview, and our prototype building. So I, I think it's just that easy. I mean, it would seem pretty easy for us when you guys did that. Am I right, Scott? Absolutely. And, and we do that all the day. I mean, all the time. That's, that's kind of what we do is we go in and we map it and we do it. So there's several different ways that we get the maps. If you already have them in digital format, that's obviously the preferred because you can just, you know, forward them on and then we can use that to, to kind of incorporate into the system. We have also um, done, like Officer Ford had mentioned, and, and been able to scan in and shrink down and scale the map. So as long as you have kind of some blueprints, it makes it super easy. If you don't have blueprints, we certainly have uh, people that we have worked with in the past to kind of help get some developed. Um, if, you, if you could tell by, by both the screenshots and the way that Officer Ford had explained his, as well as the demo I showed, you know, th there's a big bonus in having an accurate layout in the floor plan to scale and, and it done right. So it really does add a lot of value in having having the maps the way they are. And of course to be digital you know, they do need to be digital whether they're pre digital to get to us or, you know, we help you guys get it digitalized. Hey Scott, now look so at the next one's gonna be for you too. The the smartphone apps. All right. So let me actually pull up my whole list here. I wanted, I wanted to read the whole question. That's why I wanted to see that here. Okay, so our application is completely web-based. Um, with that being said, pulling up this map on a two-by-two-inch screen is going to not really be that good. We do have um, the ability to pull it up on, on certain tablets. <clears throat> right now, the application is Windows-based but it does use uh, HTML5, which is kind of a universal thing. Um, in the very ner near term, you'll be able to pull up the maps on iPads. Uh, we also do have an iPhone application that is for event management. So as you can see on the screen, you have the pop-up that we talked about. All of the information that's on there could go to an Apple phone. Uh, so if Officer Ford were to carry that or if, if other people were then you have the ability to actually get that message and can react upon it anywhere. And if your IT department set it up, that iPhone could actually get those alerts if they were even outside of the Wi-Fi environment. So there's a lot of different things you can do. Um, the smartphone app, is, is, that's kind of a generic question, but for the phone, you can get alerts. If, we, you know, if we're integrated in through email, you can get these alerts as text messages. There's a couple of, of downfalls with that. Um, when you're using our tags or using the iPhone app, there's kind of an accountability that you received the message. When we just kind of set and fire like an email um, or a text message, there's really not a, an avenue to make sure that that message was delivered. So you kind of lose a little bit of the reliability. Uh, that is getting better, so it's going to be continue to be de developed more. But as far as, as accessing it on tablet, as long you know, right now if it's Windows based, it can be done, and it will soon be uh, available on Apple products. All right, so okay. I've got a couple of quick technical questions. Uh, if I can run through these really quick, um, that will kind of maybe help answer some additional questions, or maybe even uh, bring in some other questions. So actually, this one might be for you, Brad. Do you have the Wi-Fi extending outside the building? for bus drop-off, et cetera? We do. Um, we've pushed – so our football stadium, luckily, is pretty close to our building, um, and we've pushed Wi-Fi out to the 
visitor and home side of the football field. So whoever is out there, they can utilize this product at a football game. Where that comes into a, a big area for us is not all of our people who are out there working have a have a radio. So this allows me to instant message them. Let's say we have a kid that jumps the fence. I can send an instant message to say, look for this kid who jumped a fence, whatever it might be. So we're able to take those larger events that are outside and encompass them into, into this same system, um, as well as we have a back patio where all of our kids congregate um, before school, during lunches, after school. That's covered. Our bus loading area, we're pushing Wi-Fi out there as well. So if the teacher who's out there by herself has a, has a situation, and what I do is I patrol the, the parking lot back there. So if she's got an, a, a situation, I can now get to her because she's utilizing the system out there at the bus drop-off zone. All right, so I know we're getting kind of close on time. There's a couple other questions. One one follow-up is uh, kind of uh, making some clarification. It says, can a smartphone replace the remote device? Right now, not, and and there's a couple of reasons why. One, you lose the, the button press and the interactability um, because our app is really just kind of geared for uh, receiving the messages. The reason that it's kind of been that way is because tracking – um, personal phones and stuff like that we really don't want to get into. Um, if they're hosp or if they're school provided phones that you guys have, you know that that becomes a little bit better, but there's still kind of some 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 issues with that. The main reason is accuracy because we know what the radio is, we know how everything communicates with our tags and our equipment. So for event management, for alerting, receive notifications, smartphones are a good device. But if you if you want to use those to actually determine the location of the event, uh, that is that is very difficult. Um, right now, I believe that's very difficult for pretty much anybody on the market because of the variety of cell phones, the, the different things within them, uh, and that kind of stuff. I hope that answered your question. If not, we can certainly follow up um, afterwards. So I've got a uh, – hey, are there any other questions hey, for, for you, Officer Ford? You know what? i seen one on here that I really want to touch on really fast. It says, can you either – can you please repeat or send the three components uh, on an approximate cost again? Let me tell you what our three components of this tag are. As we have – so the red button, the blue button, and then the, the pull um, lockdown or the emergency or panic button, I guess. Um, what we utilize them for is the red button if you have an unruly student – in your classroom that you need removed or you need security to your classroom that doesn't, you know, constitute a lockdown, but it constitutes, hey, I need somebody to come up to my classroom and remove this kid because he's out of control. That is what we utilize the red button for. The blue button is for us to um, respond to medical issues. So if there's any type of medical issue, we had the teacher last year after the first two days that we rolled this system out, she had a kid that was getting sick in her classroom. She was able to just push her button we responded, the nurse was able to take control of that child. The teacher doesn't leave her classroom. And that was one of our big things, too, is we did not want to disrupt the educational process. We wanted the teachers to be able to stand in their room or stay in their room with the 30 other or 40 other students that aren't experiencing a medical issue while we tend to the child, and it just made it easier so that they can just stay in their room. So that's how we're utilizing it. Um, the tags are very sturdy. That was another question is the sturdiness of the tags. I think they're very sturdy. Um, I think we may have fried one because our janitor was out fixing the sprinkler system and he, he was he got it all wet. So I mean, it's user friendly, it's durable, but you can't put it in water and it lasts. So that was our only thing that we dealt with with last year. And now we have devices that we put around our tags to help even make them more secure. So it makes it. We, we've adapted pretty well, I think, over here at Skyview to make sure that the system is uh, is running to its top quality that that we want it to. Okay, so a couple of other quick questions that got brought up is uh, is the mobile is the app mobile? I think I kind of already touched on that. It says is all you're showing uh, available on a smartphone or iPad. Uh, I kind of touched on that a minute ago. Uh, the answer is yes and no, depending upon what it is you're trying to see. But the full gamut of the full video or the full uh, location right now, it's not. Uh, and I think I explained why. Uh, another question is multiple story buildings pose no problems. And that that is absolutely correct. We uh, work really well three-dimensionally. So whether no matter how many floors you have in a building, no matter how spread out your floors are, 
uh, through our calibration process that we go in and kind of train the location of the system, uh, multi-floors really don't have any issues at all. Uh, another question is, after purchasing the solution, who trains to use this? We certainly offer training to come in. Uh, obviously, a solution is of no value if people don't know how to use it. So we certainly, through our professional services team, through the implementation process, we certainly incorporate uh, the training that's necessary within that. Uh, Brad, you might be able to answer this one. It says, is it a, if it is a school lockdown, does the tag make a noise or vibrate? Okay, it does not vibrate, and what we've done is that the person who pulls the tag, it will not make a sound on theirs. Um, and the reason why we did that, let's say that you're confronted with somebody right in front of you, and you pull that lock down, and you do it discreetly enough to where they don't even know that you've done it. We don't want that bad, bad stint chiming, and they're going, why is that going off? And you go, well, because I just called a lockdown, because, you know. So if they pull the tag, it does not, but everybody else's does. Is the way we have it set up here at, uh, at Skyview. All right, and then one more question that probably would be good for you is, is a question basically is saying, who is dispatch, the internal staff, or is it somebody that calls 911, or do you want to elaborate really quickly on, on how you guys have it set up to do that? Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Dispatch is the Nampa Police Department Dispatch Center, who I, you know, they work basically, they're our dispatchers, they send us to all of our calls. So dispatch, who is five miles away from us is still being able to view the system in the dispatch center for the police department. We don't have security that's able to sit and watch the computer screen, so we want a dispatch to be able to do it. So they're viewing the system in real time so that if a lockdown is pulled, they are alerted to it immediately and they automatically send police to me without even, come, they don't even need to come on the radio and ask me. They just automatically send two policemen to us. And the reason why we did that because we're responding to alarms all the time, and we automatically are sending policemen. And my, my question came out when we first started doing this. We're protecting our banks and our houses and our cars with these types of systems, but we're not doing it in our schools. We'll start doing this in our schools. So we, we attach dispatch to it so that we can get a faster response. All right. So uh, thank you. Another quick question that I think is kind of important, and, and I know you're in Idaho and it was a very good install. Uh, there are many other states and other school systems that have had our system in there. So, for instance, we've actually got active installations going on in uh, the state of Washington, the state of Virginia, the state of California, and Indiana. So it's really gaining a lot of adoption uh, because of, like Officer Ford said, how easy it is. Uh, to not only implement, but to use on a daily basis, as well as uh, the information that you're able to get out of it. I'm just touching base, making sure we've answered all the questions that uh, are out there. And I'm sure that through various other social media stuff, if people have additional questions, um, we can they can follow up there or they can reach out to me and I can forward along email addresses and stuff like that. Um my email is attached to the follow up email that all the attendees will get in the next twenty four hours. Um, but just to wrap up on our end, thank you guys everyone for attending today's webinar. Um like I said, if you have any follow up questions please feel free to contact me. You're gonna get an email from with my email address and in the next 24 hours with a copy of this presentation and a copy of the slides to download. Um, and if you got, and th thank you for joining us today. We hope you all have a great day and thank you all for joining us. So that's it, guys. Have a good afternoon.